Hello guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Akilo Akin Sonya and today we're going to talk about conversion in chemistry. Everybody in science, whether you do math, physics, whatever it is, you're going to come across uh, questions that will require to do conversion. Conversion is very important. You have to know how to convert from one unit to the uh, to the next. So, for example, you have um, uh, you have different unit, different SI units. Uh, one of them is length, and length it usually use centimeters and meters. In chemistry, we use uh, centimeters a lot. Uh, we also use uh, meters, and you should know how to convert between these two. Um, if if you go back to your elementary school, whatever it is, you know that 100 centimeter is equal to one meter. Okay, 100 centimeter is equal to one meter. And in one of our math class in my previous video, I also uh, talked about this this unit also. 100 centimeter is equal to one meter. Another one that we talked about is time. Okay, time in chemistry we usually use minutes. And seconds. We don't usually use hours uh, uh, when talking about time. We usually use minutes and seconds. Um, seconds is usually the, the most preferred, uh, but we use minutes in some cases also. And we know that 60 seconds is equal to one minute. And we know that 60 minutes is equal to one hour. Okay, we know that. So these are the things that we, we do, uh, convert. And that, and that one is uh, mass, okay, mass, mass. So in mass, we know that we use mostly uh, grams and kilograms. We don't use pounds in SI units, we use kilograms. And we use, for the most part, we use grams in chemistry. So we know that 1,000 grams is equal to one kilogram we know that so the question is how do you combat this you want to be able to combat between this unit in some cases they're going to give you in uh non-si units and you are supposed to convert to si units. so i'm going to draw a line here i'm going to do examples we're going to do different kind of examples okay and that example will help us to understand how to uh, convert. So I'm going to start with example one. Example one. Convert. Okay. Convert 250 minutes to seconds. That's, that is the question. Convert 250 minutes to seconds. So how do you do that? So you have 250 minutes. Minutes is usually M-I-N. You want to convert to seconds. So what you do is you say times. You know that you have 60 minutes. Uh, so 60 seconds is one minute, right? So you turn on eliminate minute and have seconds. So you want seconds to be at the top. So that means your seconds is going to be at the top. So you have 60 seconds. Okay is what one minute so what you do now is to cancel this minute half and you'll be left with 250 times 60 seconds divided by one that's what you'll be left with so you have one here so when you do the math to that you should get uh you're gonna have Zero, and this is 12, 15. So you're going to have 1500, I think 15,000, something like that, 15,000 seconds. That's what you're going to have 15,000 seconds. Okay, so that is how you, you, uh, you come back from minutes to seconds. Let's say you're giving in how? Example two. Example two, convert three hours to seconds. So you say three 
hours times you're trying to remove the hours you need you need the seconds but you can just you can you, you can definitely jump to seconds right away but you, you can also do it step by step so you know that um 60 minutes is one hour okay and you also know because we don't want any minutes one in seconds okay you also know that 60 seconds is one minute okay so now your hour cancel hour your minute cancel minute so when you left is three times 60 times 60 seconds and that's what you, that's what you left with so when you do the math of this one that will give you an answer in seconds and when you do that that gives you three times 60 that gives you 180 okay times 60 if you don't have a calculator you can say you have two zeros okay you have two zeros here so you can write the two zeros aside and say six times eight is 48 so you write eight okay and you have four six times one is six times four that's ten so you have one zero eight so put back your two two zeros together and that will give you your answer so, so 180 times 60 is one run one run eight seconds so that's your answer okay let's do other examples um this time around we're going to be working with a combination of SI unit and non SI unit. So, this is another example right here. I'm going to take this off. And one of the reasons why conversion is very important is that when you're doing SAT, uh, ACTs, you're going to come with questions where they want to, they want the answer in a specific unit, and you must know how to move from one unit to the other unit, okay? So let's say you give an example that says, example uh, three, I think. It says convert, convert 75 miles per hour to, let's say, kilometer per second, okay? Given that, given that one mile one mile is equal to say 1.609 uh, kilometer, okay? So that's what I gave you, given that 1.609 kilometer. They won't give you something for hour and second because sometimes they assume that you should know. So solution, let's solve this together. Solution, seven, 75 miles mi per hour we're trying to eliminate the miles and the hours and convert them to kilometers and seconds. So let's do one for miles first, okay? So we know that one mile is equal to 1.609 kilometers. Since we're trying to eliminate mile, the mile, the one mile is gonna be at the bottom and the kilometer is gonna be at the top. So we're gonna say 1.609 kilometer is equal to what? One mile, okay? So we get that covered. So the next one is to deal with the hour, okay? The hours at the bottom, we're trying to eliminate it. So the hour that we need is going to be at the top. So times, we know that 60 minutes is equal to one hour, right? So one hour is what? 60 minutes, okay? But we don't want any minutes. We want it in seconds. So again, we're trying to eliminate these minutes by saying one minute is equal to what, 60 seconds, we know that. Okay, so now let's go ahead and eliminate. So we we'll eliminate the hours here, we we'll eliminate the minute here, we we'll also eliminate the miles here, okay? So we are left with 75, 75. What else are we left with? Uh, kilometers here at the top. And at the bottom, we're left with 60 times 60 seconds, okay? So that gives you 75 kilometer, and that gives you 3600 seconds. So when you do that, 
when you do the calculation for that, you should come up with uh, something around, let me see. Oh, we still have, we have this right here. Sorry. We have times 1.75 times 1.75 times 1.609 I I forgot about that so when you do that math you should end up with 120.675 kilometer okay so when you divide this side together you should get 0 0.034 kilometer per second that's what you should get so if you do the math with your calculator that's what you should get so let's go to another example. Example two. Example two. No, sorry, example four. So you know how we did that. So the next one is to go to example four. In example four, they say convert. Convert. Um, 97.5. Um, say pound. 2.00 feet cube. Convert that. So that is the question. Uh, you're going to convert it to, because we're going to tell you what to convert it to. You're going to convert it to, say we're going to, uh, let's say we'll go to grams per cm cube. Let's go there. Grams per cm cube. Okay. Given that, given that, one pound is equal to 453.6 grams okay and then uh, we can say one foot one foot is equal to uh, 0 0.3 or less with centimeter right so let's say it's equal to 30.48 centimeter because we're going to centimeters right so you're giving this information right here so how do you do that solution let's go to solution Solution you have 97.5 pounds divided by 2 feet cube. Okay, so we try to eliminate the pound and convert it to grams. So the pound is going to be at the bottom and the grams is going to be at the top, right? So we say 453.6 grams, 453.6 grams is equal to 1 pound. Okay. And then we're also trying to eliminate the foot cube with a centimeter. So we know that one, the foot is going to be at the top. One foot is what? 30.48 30 centimeter. But we know we don't need the foot, we need the foot cube to be gone, not just foot. So what we do is we raise this to the power of three, that we have it as three. So when you do that, you're going to come up with. 97.5 pound over 2.00 foot cube times 453.6 grams divided by 1 pound times 1 raised by 3 is 1 and foot raised by 3 is foot cube so you have 1 foot cube okay and then you have 30.4 raised by 3 is going to be 30.48 is by three times you have cm is by three cm cube okay so that's what we need all right so uh one pound divided by pound you have the foot cube and then the foot cube okay so you have grams and you have cube right here so let me rewrite these so it's clearer you have 97.5 uh times four five three point six grams it's divided by two times this is 30.48 times 30.48 times 30.48 because we have it three times times cm cube okay so when you do the math to this one with your calculator you're going to come up with 0 0.781 grams per cm cube so what you've just done is you've converted your 97.5 pounds by 2.0 foot cube to grams per cm cube and that's what your final answer is going to be okay so 
if you are driving in america your car might be in miles per hour but if you travel to canada and you rent a car the speedometer usually on the car is in uh, kilometer per second okay and if you're not careful you may be thinking that you are not speeding while in Canada because your mind your mind is saying you are traveling in miles per hour but in Canada you may be traveling in kilometer per second and what is 40 miles per hour in the US is not the same thing as 40 miles per hour in Canada right so if if you uh, if I uh, example five is going to show that and that this, that's where I'm going with this what I'm saying right now. So The question here is Come back And this is a part of chemistry come back 20 miles per hour to kilometer uh let's say kilometer per hour let's do that's gonna keep keep per hour because in canada that's where you're gonna see this so uh 12 miles per hour to kilometer per hour so you have 12 miles uh we know that one mile one mile is equal to uh 1.6 1 1.609 kilometer all right that's what we know so let's convert this 20 miles 20 mi per hour times we need to eliminate the miles so your miles are going to be at the bottom so you're going to have 1.609 kilometer divided by one mile okay so your hour is going to remain but your mile is going to cancel out so when you when you times 20 times 1.609 you should get 32.18 so you're gonna get 32.18 kilometer per hour. So you you got to uh, Canada with your car. Your car is only programmed to uh, miles per hour. You'll be driving to Canada, and you go to a road, and in that road you got to see a sign that says speed limit. Speed limit is 20 kilometer per hour. On your car, you see it is showing you 20 miles per hour on your car. Most people don't, uh, especially most Americans, don't know that uh, your car is in miles per hour. <laughs> um, so when you get to Canada, you're driving and you are driving on 20 miles per hour. And then the cop pulls you over and says you're speeding. And you say, no, I'm not speeding. My speedometer is showing me I'm traveling at 20. Uh, then the, the cop can say, no, you're actually going at 32 uh, kilometers per hour. So it tells you you're actually going at 32. And you say you're going at 20. The problem is your car, your American car, is in miles per hour. And in Canada, they are operating under kilometer per hour. Right? So even though your car is saying you're traveling at 20, because your speedometer, which is like this, is showing 20 right here. You see, I'm, I'm under 20. But in reality, if you change that, that 20 is in miles, MPH, miles per hour, instead of KPH, uh, okay? And in here, you're probably going to see KPH here, and it's in KPH might be uh, 32, okay? So if, if you don't pay attention to your unit, you might be in trouble. And that's what happens in chemistry. You have to pay attention to the unit. Also in engineering, you have to pay attention to the unit. If you don't know how to convert, if you're not using the right measurement, or right unit, uh, things might go out of hand. And you don't want that to happen. So as a scientist, as a chemist, you must know how to convert. Even when you do ACT and the rest, uh, there are questions that will require you to know how to convert. And that is why it's important that you understand conversion and how to use it. Uh, I hope this class has been very beneficial. Uh, our next class, we're going to be going deep now, more into chemistry, uh, because we've covered the basis of, you know, how to handle data and how to handle numbers. And the next thing now is to start delving into 
chemistry uh, uh, you know calculations uh, the first thing we're going to look at is density we're going to look at the difference between mass weight and density and we're going to start looking at different things in there and we'll start doing uh, calculation based on that uh, if you're new to this channel don't forget to subscribe like the video share the video with your friends and also drop the comment if you if you want me to do something or, or if you have uh, something that you want me to touch on uh, i will appreciate that comment and i'm gonna get back to you on that thank you very much for watching my video i appreciate it have a wonderful day